Okay, so uh, without further ado, Bert, do you want to start? Yeah, so uh, dear friends and colleagues, it's my pleasure to welcome to you to this event. And it is especially my pleasure to say that uh, Beckham has followed uh, yeah, my path a little bit. I have been Professor um, Thomas Straumann Chair for Material Science and Medicine uh, since uh, 2006. So I'm at the University of Basel since 2006. But I do know Beckham already longer because uh, he made his uh, master thesis at ETH Zurich and my team as well. And it was my great pleasure that he joined uh, somehow later the University of Basel and made a PhD under my supervision uh, in the field of nanosciences. And I was criticized a lot uh, uh, at the beginning of my time at the University of Basel because I was not part of uh, yeah, uh, supporting new companies, uh, startups, spin-offs, and so forth. And it took me quite some time. And the first one was uh, founded in 2019, also the second one. And now we have a third one in uh, uh, 2021, beginning of this year, that is Bot Neuro, and Bacon will present it today. And I hope he can answer all your questions. And I hope we have, will have a lively discussion about it. And with that, I like to give to, to Raphael. Uh, he is uh, yeah, of the organizer of the meeting. Raphael, please. Well, thank you very much, um, Bert, for the, for the kind introduction. Uh, we're really glad to be at the University of Basel, now virtually. Uh, it's wonderful to have a professor uh, with us who is actively uh, involved in entrepreneurship. I think this always adds a different perspective. And yeah, thank you for um, connecting us to Beacon. Um, yes, we know Beacon for a while. Uh, he's been a winner of several of our uh, Venture Kick grants. Um, but um, now this was really a great opportunity to, to connect it all. Um, the great potential of the University of Basel in biotech and medtech and the actual case of a, a very high striving startup. Uh, but neuro um, about today to give you an idea what we what we want to do we have one hour so we really want to go through the program we want to introduce you to what is possible in um, in terms of uh, support that you can apply for if you want to start a company um, th there's both financial support available where we will especially talk about the programs available by Gebert Rüff Foundation but then there's also more support available, institutional support from the University of Basel. And um, I, um, I'm very grateful that Leonie can, can join us today because she is uh, responsible of that, for that program and will introduce you to some of um, what, what you can use um, at the institution. And then um, as the main part, we will listen to Bikim about his story and he will share his best advice on um, how to get access to the resources. Uh, he was very successful in getting like a, a higher sum of money from, uh, from grants and uh, the, the programs that we are recommending. And maybe you can take away some of his tips, how he did it. And then if you have questions, please write them in the little chat box uh, of Zoom and we'll address them at the end of this presentation. Now, um, to give you a quick idea why we do what we do, um, we at Venture Lab, we're here to, to create world-class startups, pure and simple. Um, and that is possible in Switzerland because you have excellent infrastructure. You really have some of the best uh, research institutions in the world based here. So provided that you have the desire, um, yeah, chances are that you can really do it very well from here. Uh, if you have the right concept and if you have the right um, skills that you probably acquired throughout, throughout your science career, then you can build something fantastic here. And um, we want to support you in any way. Um, there are so many ways because there are so many challenges that you may face as an entrepreneur. Uh, it starts with 
yeah, most people don't know even uh, what what entrepreneurship is all about. They just have a great um, research project that could turn into an into a promising product. Well, so we start with um, coaching, but we also start with the uh, financing for your first uh, for your first steps. So uh, if you if you are uh, at the stage where you're thinking about starting a company, or if you just want to evaluate whether this is a, a viable option, then there are two programs that I would especially um, recommend to you. The one being um, the InnoSwiss training. You see it here, it's InnoSwiss.VentureLab.ch. This is already the, a little bit more of the advanced stage because we at VentureLab um, do the um, uh, the third and fourth stage of the trainings. There are more, uh, the, the first stages is something that you will get at the University of Basel and Leonie can talk about it. And then the other thing that I, uh, I would highly recommend uh, checking out is the programs available uh, by VentureKick and Gebert Rue Foundation. Actually, VentureKick is financed by Gebert Rue Foundation. And uh, th those are really fantastic programs um, because it gives, gets you some money but most of all, it gets you connections to business angels in Switzerland, to industry contacts, to the kind of people um, you need to know because uh, they will really guide you. Yeah, And Beacon will probably uh, confirm that this guidance is much more important even than the financing. Yeah, um, yeah th there are more programs available like if in terms of internationalization, we have the Venture Leaders Program, we take entrepreneurs, uh, um, abroad to the hotspots of the industry. In in the case of life science, that would be Boston mostly, but we've also just returned from um, Munich and from London. So here's a lot we can do for you um, if you're a bit further. And then of course, if you want to learn about like the big success stories of Switzerland, um, yeah, I, I recommend to check out the Oscars night of Swiss startups, it's the uh, top 100 Swiss startup award every um, every September. Yeah, um, more help. Also, the basic services are covered. They are not um, offered by us directly, but by our partner IFJ. Uh, if you need a company, you need to set it up. You need to have an accountant and all these things, the boring stuff. Um, check out IFJ because they are doing it at a at the, the lowest cost uh, possible. Um, it's all standardized and I think they do every second incorporation in Switzerland as it runs through IFJ. So that just gives you an idea of how <laughs> how fast they are. Um, yeah, and that's that's the support you can get. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about what you can expect from Gebert Rue Foundation. Gebert Rue Foundation is, is a great institution. It's funded by old money from uh, Geberit. Uh, you, you may know um, if, if you visit any bathroom in Switzerland, you will probably know where the money is coming from. Um, and uh, yeah, they are doing wonderful stuff. Um, and I would like to introduce you to three programs. Uh, one is Venture Kick, next is Inno Booster, and then there's also First Ventures for some of you. Um, and each of them gives you um, the maximum of 150k and then finally there's also one more source of funding available which is the venture capital fund it's it's um, totally new and I will tell you about it too now about venture kick what is this venture kick is really the kick at the at the beginning so if you just have an idea um, for, for a project that might turn off, apply for the program. Um, the, the first that you can win is 10,000 uh, Swiss francs. Of course, this is not much money, but this will already give you um, like the possibility to, to work on a proof of concept maybe, and uh, also gives you access to extremely experienced coaches. Yeah, because um, we run these, selection rounds with uh, active business angels who are all entrepreneurs and investors themselves. So if you get um, if you get coaching from them, you get it from people who um, who have done it all already. Yeah, with 
success. If you if you want to apply for it, you can do that anytime. Go to the Venture Kick website. Uh, I would also advise before you pitch, reach out to entrepreneurs who have already won it. Very easy. On the Venture Kick website, you find a section where you can find the old projects and uh, look for startups that do something similar uh, to what you want to do. And then just connect with the founders on LinkedIn and um, yeah, reach out to them. Um, if you are serious about what you're doing, I, I think no one will refuse to talk to you and uh, give you some feedback to help you uh, win this pitch. Take this pitch very serious. Um, not, not everyone wins it, but um, if, you, if you get access to it, this is a fantastic, fantastic opportunity. Um, yeah, and then there are two more stages to win convertibles, convertibles, so that's not pure grants, it's just um, very, very um, it's just financing at very favorable conditions. And um, we can, can tell you more about it if you're interested. I also want to mention now the other two, um, two uh, programs that we have from Gebert Rüff Foundation. Now here's the Inno Booster program. And I think Inno Booster is very important uh, because it's, uh, it can help you to incentivize the, the research institute that you're working with to support you. It's not money that is going directly to your project, but it's money that will go to the institute, to the university, uh, to your professor, and chances are he or she will be much more um, yeah, welcoming when you, when when you are pitching your idea to uh, to spin off a company, yeah, and then you can make an agreement about um, using his or her uh, lab uh, resources and yeah, uh, maybe maybe extend your contract for a while so that you get uh, that you get pa paid while you are already working on your project. So for the, uh, the next application deadline is fe February 1st for this one. And then we have one more program uh, that is maybe not available to all of you because most of you will probably be at the University of Basel. But just in case you are working with a University of Applied Sciences, yeah, uh, if there's a way to, to have a project with, um, with one of those institutions in Switzerland, then there's extra funding available, um, another CHA uh, 150K. Uh, so um, yeah, and, and the great part about First Ventures is there's less competition. Yeah, because there are less projects from universities of applied sciences. And that's why Gebert Rue Foundation especially wants to support those. Um, take the chance to uh, check out this program if there's a way for you to work with uh, with someone at the University of Applied Sciences. Um, one more thing, which is new, um, it's, it's the Talent Kick program. Talent Kick is a program that is um, helpful, especially to those of you who have never ever been involved with uh, startups. And you, you say, hey, I want to know what it's all about. I have no idea. Then Talent Kick is is something that you can do along with your studies or along with your research. And uh, you, have, you have a certain period where you get coaching on how to set up a startup project. And additionally, you get a little bit of money. It's, it's 5,000 francs. Um, the, the application uh, round, the next one closes in two days. So if you're interested in this one, uh, go to the web, website straight away um, this afternoon, talentkick.ch. Okay. Um, okay, there's one more thing that I want to mention. It's not on the slides. But um, in case that you win all three stages of Venture Kick, and we have someone in the room who has done it, <laughs> then you qualify automatically for. 850,000 francs in financing if you want it, if you want it, yeah? Um, it's, um, the condition is that you find another investor who will at least invest the same amount. So if you find someone else uh, who, 
who uh, invests 850,000 uh, francs, then um, the kick fund will match it. So, um, I mean, talk to the talk to the management of this fund. It's it's totally new, uh, um, but but I think this is a great opportunity, especially for life science projects, because life science projects are always very expensive. Good, and with that, um, I would like to hand over to Leonie, um, who will tell you a little bit about what you can get from University of Basel. Yes, Raphael, thank you so much. If you don't mind, can you end your screen sharing? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Um, I will try to cut myself short. Uh, of course, I have a massive slide deck, um, but I just wanted to highlight a few things that might be relevant for you. I think uh, some of you are already familiar with the Innovation Office. Um, here we go. My name is Leonie. I have been working for the Innovation Office since two years responsible for uh, innovation uh, skills and people. And we really have expanded our offer in the last few years um, when it comes to entrepreneurship education. As you can see here, the innovation office sees itself basically at the intersection of academia, industry and government, and really serves as a, as a bridge builder and as a connector between these um, different institutions and helps to enable um, innovation and support you in your entrepreneurial endeavors. What I wanted to highlight today um, are different offers, as um, Raphael nicely <laughs> briefed me as well in the introduction. Um, two things um, I wanted to highlight is the InnoSwiss offer, but then also um, a recently established program, or it was first planned to be only a grant, but has now uh, been expanded into a fully fledged program, the so-called propelling program. And um, we can give that away to four projects a year. The call is open twice a year. We've just uh, uh, kind of announced the winners for the, for this semester's round. Um, and this is 50,000 in non dilutive funding, not a ton of money, um, but basically it's really kind of a kickstart for really early research projects um, and really helps you get on track with mentoring and also workshops like how to incorporate, um, how to uh, secure your intellectual property and then also one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, with experts. And um, as I said, it really is serves to bridge kind of this early stage um, research project. Um, and then of course, we also have a new home, which is very nice in Altschwil. We have a very cool innovation garage now that I unfortunately had to leave now again because of the home office mandate. But there, um, we also really invite you there um, for workshops, but also for like co-working and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, um, I think many of you know that already, as Rafael correctly mentioned in the beginning, we do offer Module 1 and Module 2 here at the Uni Basel. Um, the Module 1 event has just been last week, I think, um, and we also do that twice a year, usually one in December, one in May. And then we start our entrepreneurship training course again at the end of February. This is a 12 weeks course mainly aimed at um, affiliates of the uni, um, no matter what kind of what stage, so early students, but also PhD students, postdocs, professors, doesn't matter. And this is really kind of the toolbox um, and the first step into entrepreneurship, focusing on topics like a business model, unique value proposition, market assessment, but then also leadership, marketing, IP, uh, legal, and financing. Um, and then this is kind of really the, the point then to get started. Um, and yes, this is going to start again end of February, uh, beginning of March, like I said. And these um, other modules are the ones that uh, Rafael previously mentioned. Um, and yeah, this is then how, how it looks like. Um, the, this is the sign up link. I'm happy to post that in the chat. Um, or you can also just uh, send me an email if you have any questions um, also concerning the propelling uh, program. I'm happy to give individual information as well. And here on the left, you see those different modules. And here, as I said, our new space um, and kind of some impressions from, from this year's cohort where uh, we had a lot of fun because it was our first cohort back in the real world. Blah, blah, blah. This is interesting. Um, basically, startups are growing each year. Investment is growing. Um, it's going well in terms of entrepreneurial spirit at the Uni Basel, and we are very happy about that. And of course, we hope that some of you will be contributing to those numbers in the future as well. 
One thing that is a personal um, kind of hard project of, of mine and Virginia um, is the Femtonoise Initiative. Uh, we have founded uh, this initiative in 2019 because we had identified a lack of, of female entrepreneurs in our daily lives and our daily work lives mainly. Um, and thus we decided to found this initiative who really aims at um, fostering female entrepreneurship, giving the, uh, the women the right network connections training um but really to to empower them if women even need empowerment so um, that is a term that i stumble upon a bit um so i didn't want to say that any longer but i think it's a nice way to put it um how we do that is we, we create a community for femtrepreneurs so that we match them with either team colleagues with senior advisors um and that we also give them visibility which is very important um, then that we connect them with local offers. So we don't want to create a second kind of path for only women. That is not our aim at all, but rather we want to um, funnel them through other offers and inform them about uh, funding offers or training offers, um, provide them with training, but then also as uh, Rafael mentioned in the beginning, um, especially in Switzerland, global thinking and big thinking is very important. So um, we do have a partner in in India, but are also in close contact with Swiss Next in Boston, so that we can also um, expose them to global markets. This is a selection of our current programs. Um, most of the stuff we do um, is findable um, on LinkedIn. So this is really the best way to find us, Femtonars. Um, we just had our kind of flagship event this Friday. Um, and yeah, I don't want to go too much into depth. We have a course on leadership. We always do different reports on, on innovators, female innovators in Switzerland. We always uh, also now started a series on, on personal finance. Um, but yeah, check out check out our websites uh, to learn more. Um, I also mentioned this pupella.org. I did not mention yet, but this is our kind of cooler website. So here you can see we have the uh, official Unibas website here, Unibas Innovation. And then we have the Pupella website that you can look at if you want to learn more about what we do and what different programs and things we have, be it for the firms, but also for the general innovation office. That was a whirlwind. Uh, thank you so much. Reach out to me via LinkedIn or email if you have any further questions um, and hope to see some of you around. Well, thank you very much, Leonie, for this introduction. And yeah, um, I think this is this is a very valid point to stress uh, the to stress the potential of female entrepreneurship, especially in life science. I'm happy to say that we see we see a lot of growth there. Um, just last week, we had a workshop with uh, Daniela from Cutis. She won the top 100 Swiss startup awards last year. And yeah, I mean, uh, there's no reason to say that, um, that that not all possibilities are here. And I think it's just important to uh, connect founders with with role models who who just get the who give who give the encouragement to really do it. Um, yeah, and with that, with that, I would like to hand over to um, Beacon. Because Beacon is um, one of our uh, big success stories from Basel, and um, he is also someone who uh, who has been in Zurich at ETH, uh, but now he's in Basel, um, and he's been a winner of all three stages of Venture Kick. Now, Beacon, tell us a little bit about um, how you started your company and how you got to the stage where you're at now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rafa. <clears throat> Thanks, Rafa. Thanks for uh, yeah, having me here. It's really a pleasure. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, I have prepared a presentation. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, let me go into too many too many notifications. So, so you see my screen? Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be here. I. Uh, really want to give you some insights about yeah, how to turn a science project into a, into a startup. Uh, I want basically to give you some insights from the experience I have learned as a co-founder of uh, Bot Neuro and Bot Medical. 
So uh, you will hear the word bot medical and bot nara a lot uh, during this or the next 20 minutes. So like uh, the name bot is derived from the initials from, uh, from our names, uh, Vicky, Mosmani and Tino Tupper. Uh, nevertheless, uh, these are two different companies. So like they are uh, active in two different fields, both medtech, but uh, bot nara is uh, uh, basically founded beginning of this year. We were funded by the Gebert Rift Foundation for the last two years. And we just closed the seed round of 3 million uh, like uh, last month. And uh, Bot Medical there, we have started in 2019. And we have already closed the Series A beginning of this year there. And we have already a CE certified product as a medical class one device. And there basically we are looking now for upscaling for partnerships and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, bringing this to the people. So we have all, already launched the market entry uh, like three months ago, and uh, we have done it in this way. Like uh, Tino Tupper, he is the CEO of Bot Medical, and uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Bot Neuro. And as uh, we are the major shareholders in both companies, we use the same name. Yeah. Let me start with the team, because I think this is the most, most interesting part or most crucial part when you start a startup. Yeah, it's like you need for sure, you need, uh, you need a good team, especially if you talk to investors. So like they want to see, is there a substantial, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, team behind the idea? Otherwise, it will just remain an idea. And uh, I mean, here, the green part is now like, because we just started with Botner, we have uh, six people now on board, two more will join in January and in uh, February. But uh, I think what you can do as a startup is maybe you, you can al already in the early stage, you can look for skilled advisors because you will need advice on your journey. I mean, no one is an, is an expert in everything. So you need, you need to be coached. And this was also a big, let's say, uh, for, for me, being part of Venture Kick was really the best thing that could have happened to me because it totally somehow with Bea Chilik, I totally, let's say, I want to thank him uh, 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 basically for being my personal coach during this time because I think he brought some really good ideas, you know, what, what, how we can make this... Uh, uh, let's say what we initially had in thought, uh, making a product out of it, yeah. And I also like uh, maybe uh, also when you consider who to take into the board, I think also there it makes sense, it makes sense to have really experienced people there. So like here uh, at Bordnore, we have as a chairman of the board, uh, the former CEO of Metron in Switzerland. I wanted to have someone in the, uh, on the board, which is really, highly experienced, also when it comes to big numbers, and also like uh, Pascal Brenneisen, and he was the former CEO of Novartis Switzerland. And uh, from the scientific part, we have uh, Bert Müller, who was also my doctor father. And also like I got different experts for different uh, things. And, and uh, what we did maybe where we differ from other startups is like, we included the advisors during the seared round with a small percentage, uh, uh, like uh, to have uh, some common stocks of the company. So by this, I can really make sure when I call them, they, 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 they give me advice, they take their time, otherwise it will be difficult. And uh, the team at uh, Bot Medical is uh, even larger. So there we have a, a larger uh, operational team. So here maybe, so like me and Tino, we are the co-inventors of the Natura liners. I will come back to that later on. And, uh, and uh, so I'm still a CTO there, but only until the end of the month. So I will hand over because uh, now I have to focus fully on Fort Neuron. Let me go back four years <laughs> earlier. Uh, this, was, uh, this is me and Tino. Uh, so we just finished our PhD thesis at the University of Basel. We were very happy about this. We were at the scientific conference presenting our results and then headed up north from Denver to Minneapolis. So we had set up a meeting with the R&D department of Medtronic there. So like this was done by, uh, uh, by Rolf Wildermuth, like uh, 
who is now the chairman of the company. And uh, was a very was a very nice meeting. So we had we showed uh, our results. Be, let's say uh, also beforehand we make sure, we made sure the sure that we had an NDA in place and uh, also like a file for the related patents. And uh, we had a two days meeting. Uh, was everything good? So like uh, they liked our idea, and we got even a letter of intent. Uh, and uh, with this letter of intent, and we we went back. And, uh, and then we talk to investors, we have a nice idea. Uh, it can be used for uh, brain computer interfaces, spinal cord simulations, like an implantable solution. And, uh, and uh, we told them, yeah, it's uh, the amount we need in total would be around 50 million. And uh, the earliest market entry is like 2026. And uh, yeah, no one liked this idea because <laughs> Because uh, the, yeah, most of the people we talked to, they had already invested in similar companies. So like this is also what you do first uh, when you talk to investors, you look for investors who are already engaged in similar companies. And uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, this was a quite uh, interesting experience. But let me go four years back in time, 2013, when me and Tina started with the PhD in the group of Bert Müller at the biomaterial science center so like we are really we were really enthusiastic scientists we set up from scratch together with bert uh, uh mbd machine it's molecular beam deposition system where we could fabricate uh, and control uh, nanometer thin uh, silicon films and make stretchable electrodes out of this and uh, i mean it was cool so like we were uh, we had the time to really deep dive into a topic I mean, me and Tino, we, we did together, I think in total as also like uh, as co-authors more than 20 papers, but maybe this is also like the, the lesson I learned. So no one is, ca is caring about your publications. So like uh, when you talk to investors, they think, okay, it's good. I mean, they expect it from you that you know your fields, you know, like otherwise you would not do it. Yeah. And, uh, and what they were asking for, they were asking for patents, yeah. So nevertheless, there was a clinical need for soft neural implants, so like, uh, uh, and there is still a clinical need about this, so because uh, current implants are thick and, uh, and uh, rigid, and you have uh, hard metal electrodes, which lead to the encapsulation uh, of the with scar tissue. And this is mainly because you have a huge mechanical mismatch between the very soft brain tissue and the rigid metal electrodes. And, uh, this is basically where Gabriel Drift came into play. So we presented them this idea and uh, in 2018, and they liked somehow our approach and we got funded. So like uh, uh, we got uh, 300K during that time from uh, Gabriel Drift and uh, with uh, our own contribution of additional 400K. So we were able to really fabricate this kind of devices we had in mind. So like, uh, and uh, was quite successful. So we have we have three patents now, which are held now by the University of Basel. It's a it's a cool technology. It's a plant based three D mattress technology. It gets soft when it's implanted in the body because it's made out of cellulose. And most of you know when you make paper wet, it gets soft. This was the basic idea we had. And it's really thin. It's about ten times thinner. Thinner. We had micro perforations to make it more adaptable to the to the to the brain and also soft electrodes in place it was like if you can select like what do i want from an implant so like this is it yeah and uh and uh nevertheless for bot neuro now this we are not following this uh, this path to use this as an implant because of the of the mentioned reasons so like we are using this as a platform technology because we found out uh, i mean uh Within the Gabriel Drift project, we found out we can use this technology to, to uh, as a platform technology to to test and validate stimulation protocols for glia and uh, and neurons. So, like uh, from all this research, like what what remained was is like I mean it's a cool thing. It's uh, so like we can uh, it gives us like the the, the solid uh, support also in terms of. Uh, developing further applications and testing stimulation protocols without 
let's say, having the need to go for animal experiments. So like we can test them at a very early stage if, if uh, this kind of protocols help or not. And uh, this is like, uh, let me tell you just shortly what we are doing now uh, with partners. So like we are developing electrical stimulation therapies for AD, that means for Alzheimer patients. And uh, Alzheimer's is still a big challenge in, in the world. So like we have uh, in Switzerland, about 150,000 active patients with 100 new patients per day. And uh, like in these three regions, we are talking about 11,000 new patients diagnosed with AD. So it's like, it's like a, a disease which is becoming even worse because of the aging society. And this is done in Switzerland with the 46 memory clinics we have, and they do this 100 new diagnoses per day. The prevalence in women is a little bit higher than in men, so we don't know really why this is, but this is a fact. And uh, how the product looks like now, like what we are doing uh, at the bottom of so First, we start with a 3D scan of the head, and then we do a PET scan of the brain, with the PET scan, we can look at the regions which are affected in the brain, like we can look at the amyloid uh, 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 depositions and amyloid and, uh, and uh, also like at uh, tau proteins. And then we merge these two things into one STL model. STL model and we 3D print them this, uh, this, this device. It's like a shell. We include then the electronics and there is also a personalization step. And, uh, and uh, and uh, this is how the final product looks like. Like it's a, it's a shell which perfectly fits to your brain. So by this, you can make sure you have a, like a controlled uh, contact uh, of the electrodes to the, to, the, to, the, to the skin head. And this is then connected to a tablet where, uh, and also powered by a, by a tablet and uh, where the patient then can start the therapy. But uh, nevertheless, I want also to show you this slide. I mean, it's a little bit early for us, but uh, when uh, I talked to investors, one of the main things was like, uh, I mean, it's a great idea, but what happens if there might be a, let's say, a, a medication for AD? So like basically you would be out, uh, uh, out of the market. And, uh, and uh, I think that you, when you develop something or when you're working on something, make sure it's a platform technology. So it can be also used for, for other applications. And uh, this is the case in, uh, for both neuros, so like we can use the same device for brain monitoring, like telehealth. There are also some indications that uh, stimulating of glia cells uh, for stroke patients is beneficial for epilepsy and also for post-traumatic stress disorders. What is what medical doing? Uh, so here we have uh, developed a cellulose-based uh, clear aligner system, which gets you rid of microplastics because uh, this kind of aligners they are called, you wear them for a year and you don't want to have a plastic thing in your mouth. And this was the idea that we have and being experts in polymer. So like uh, me and Tino, we were uh, uh, quite fast in uh, developing such a product uh, in, uh, 2019, and uh, it's also like the world's first clear aligner made of cellulose, and it's also protected by patents, and uh, it also, uh, let's say, uh, big players are uh, attracted by this solution. They are so we are in contact with them now how to do the upscaling, and uh, maybe there where is the there is the common or baseline so like here also for uh, at both medical we use cellulose uh, as a coating technology and we know from from paper also from cellulose that it's able to take up and release active substances and uh, so we have this uh, correct line there was a uh, what we are working now uh, this is already c certified uh, for this we are expecting the ce mark beginning of next year so it's like a cosmetic product, like protecting your teeth during the night. And uh, also here, the platform technology, what uh, I think is very important, uh, like uh, here you have, you need all these products which uh, should be in the pipeline. So here uh, we are already uh, preparing third generation, so-called therapeutics where basically uh, using this kind of device, you can also deliver therapies. 
But where the funding pathways, and I think this is maybe more important uh, for you, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, for Botnoyla, like we started, uh, we were funded by this NanoTerra project within the group of Bert Miller for, for the first four years. And then I got, I think it was a 50K uh, investment from or funding from the Unitectra to do a proof of concept on, uh, on uh, neural uh, implants. And then there uh, was the Gaber Triff uh, grant and then followed by the Venture Kick. And this was for me very, very, very interesting or important. So like uh, during the Gaber Triff grant being part of Venture Kick, so I learned, uh, uh, I, I, I met uh, Beat Schillig there and we really like uh, could build up a business model which can convince investors then to to go for this uh, for this uh, product and uh, and at the end of the day it was also like uh, I, I must say it was easy to to raise the money so because i i i i never wrote an email to to investors so like just like from the from the LinkedIn posts, like from Venture Kick, like people approached me, and oh, this is a cool thing. Can you tell me more about this? Also, like uh, people who were part of the jury during this Venture Kick sessions, they called me after the, the presentation and they said, I'm in, uh, how much can I uh, bring? So like, this was really cool. So like, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think uh, especially because, and, this is also what uh, basically I learned from Beat, like uh, during the seed round, don't go to VCs. So like, it's, uh, it's very important that you stay with business angels because they are less complicated. They don't ask for complicated term sheets and things like that. So it's a, I think it's a, it's a good starter. And uh, for uh, both medical, so like there was a different pathway. Uh, so like there, we got a bridge uh, proof of concept grant and there was also like a competition by the hundreds camel by the Basel. Uh, it was not much, but it's good also like for you, like be part of this competition. It's, you learn a lot, you talk to people. And, uh, and uh, also here we have two InnoSwiss projects running. I think this is non-dilutive money, which is very, very important for startups. And, uh, it is also like uh, important, as I mentioned in the beginning, like to have some IPs uh, as a startup, because when you have a good idea, there is a high risk that someone might copy you. Uh, and if this is a bigger player, they can, let's say, uh, they can bring it like to market much faster than you can. And so like you will be in contact, I guess, uh, or you have to, yeah, you will get in touch with Unitectra. Uh, this is a technology transfer office uh, from the University of Basel. And they cover the initial patent application costs. So, like, uh, and uh, but the learning is like, <laughs> is uh, it's uh, it's not so easy because uh, at the end of the day they ask for common shares. So it's like, uh, and this is the percentage which is quite uh, substantial. So you should really consider if you basically you have IP which you have to license it back from the university. So you make sure you have some common stocks which you can then give to the Unitectra. And also like uh, they want uh, royalties on the, on the licensed product. So uh, I think this might change in the future, but this is uh, how it's handled today. What are my key learnings so far? So like uh, for me, it was really important. Like, uh, I mean, when you look for money, look for smart money. I mean, smart money is, I mean, it's a term you hear a lot. It's basically getting money from people who are convinced by your idea, who bring the message further. And also like uh, in terms of smart money, maybe I have uh, uh, most of the investors I have. So we have seven investors uh, at Botnoyer now. So like it was, uh, it was, I have someone who is also interested like, uh, and it was like a mouth to mouth propaganda uh, uh, mostly. And it's also important that so you, you take advantage of these non-dilutive uh, funds like uh, from the Gaber Tree Foundation, from Venture Kick, and also like now from, uh, from uh, these propeller grants, uh, which are available at the University of Basel. Uh, uh, and uh, I think these are smaller amounts, but it's uh, nevertheless, it's a, it's a good start. So like to really test your, your product in front of an audience. 
and uh, embrace changes, like rethink your initial ideas. I think this is also like, it will be never the case that you start with something and you will have a product like five years later. So like, it can be totally different. This was the case for, for us. So like uh, we started with uh, invasive implants and ended up with a non-invasive solution, which is, I mean, it, it's beneficial in terms of, you know, you need less money because this is a class three medical device and this is class two B. Like you will be much faster on the market. You need less money. And, uh, and also at the end of the day, the patient will benefit from this technology earlier. And uh, I also showed in the very beginning of the presentation, the team, because I think this is the key. Like if you have a good team, you can basically, you can build and grow a business. So like, otherwise it will just remain an idea. And, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe then executed by someone else. How to get a premium valuation? Because uh, I mean, uh, like we were asking for uh, this uh, 3 million and it, I heard a lot, uh, you know, like, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it is, it's, you are in the seed uh, stage and why so much money? And so like, uh, um, you, you still can do it. So like you have just to convince investors that you are addressing a large market. Then you have an excellent team's track record and then uh, the growth potential is huge or the upscaling like, uh, and, uh, and what is also like very important at the beginning, so how you can increase your valuation is like to establish early, at early stage partnerships with some strategic uh, players. And, uh, and, uh, and at the end of the day, it's always like, uh, it's uh, how, much, how much you want to give for your, for your MVP. There are so many valuation models, models at the end of the day, for, for me, it was just like, we need this amount to come to the next step. And this is the amount we can basically dilute. And maybe the last thing is like, make sure you have fun every day, because I mean, there is a lot of work coming and also like a lot of up and downs, you know, when you get positive results or positive evaluations or negative. So, but uh, I think this is part of the journey and, uh, and, if I would have to do it again, I would do it the same way. Uh, with this, I want to thank you for your attention. And I think we have 10 minutes more or 12 minutes for questions. Well, thank you, Bikim, very much for, for this uh, inspiring and concise uh, presentation of your journey. I think it's, it's, it's really neat to see uh, the path you've taken with two companies, because it just shows that there are many ways to get um, to funding and to get to um, yeah, further steps of success. And of course, this journey is not over. We wish you all the best for, for the further growth. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, that in the end, the patients benefit from it. Um, and, and I think this is so exciting about life science because it's really about life. Um, yeah, question. Uh, would would anyone take the chance to ask something? Then please just just write it in the chat, and we can take it from there. I can't see. Ask a question out loud that I never asked, but I think that I'm like curious about since a long time when I talked to founders. What would happen, Bikim, if, or like, where do you take kind of the persistence or the like continuous growth for it? Because like, sometimes I imagine like, what would happen if you were like, oh, like I, I've seen this, like I've, I've had it, um, someone else should continue this. And like, what's your take on to keep going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a difficult part, yeah? especially if you build up something and then you hand you have to hand it over at one day because it's just like uh, time-wise, it's not compatible. Like uh, you have, I mean, uh, I think uh, like uh, when you work, let's say for a longer period of time, you know, until the late hours in the evening. So like maybe it's time to hand over some parts of your responsibilities. But uh, I think uh, for me, it's like, uh, uh, 
so there is a like a critical size uh, of people uh, involved in the startup and I see they are independent or when I, let's say, uh, I mean, this is like the case now with uh, both medical. So like uh, there we are really like we have good people on board. So there I have also like I'm getting now uh, uh, out of the CTO role. So like I think was for me also like a little bit uh, difficult, you know, like uh, because I have, I had to do it in a statement, you know, like uh, uh, agreement uh, agreement. So because it's, I mean it's a it's a it's a legal company, so like it's uh, so we have really to to do this uh, in a statement, uh, like uh, uh, to write really this letter, you know, like that I will step off, you know, from first of January. It's difficult, but uh, once you see that is uh, like I mean there we have all the product on the market. So like it's uh, it's about growth now, and maybe there are better people than me doing that. You know, like uh, I like to bring on new ideas. You know, bring bring people together to make these ideas. You know, happen. But that one, that, so like for me, it's it's a. Uh, uh, um, so uh, it's a joy seeing that. So like, it's not something like uh, I stick to a company. Also like if, let's say if there is a potential exit, so it's okay for me. So like at the end of the day, I just want to make sure that people can really take advantage of this technology. And this is what startups is or are all about. So like really like changing the life of, uh, of the next generations. Great, thanks Pekim. Um... Tobias, you have a question. Would you like to speak up? Yes, uh, thank you. So thanks for the talk. Um, I want to know, um, because you said at the beginning that you had several patents, but then you said you switched to a different version of the product. So did you still use these patents um, or did you convince the investors without them? Yeah, it's a, it's, <clears throat> it's a good question. So what we did is like, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, bought Neuro, we are, um, following all this non-invasive approach. We use this as a RD platform, um, but uh, what uh, we will do is like, so like what, uh, so the, in the future, so as I said, this is a still unsolved thing. So like uh, I, uh, people who invested basically in bot neuro, so like they are also uh, participating or also, also taking advantage of these patents. So like, uh, because I might think that maybe we will also go at a certain stage, maybe in five years from now, I don't know, uh, we will also go to this uh, invasive solution. And there we have also like with Bert Müller, we have uh, now a PhD student starting, like we are developing this technology like uh, further because there is a huge potential, which is still unmet. But uh, exactly like uh, what we did is like, because when we switched to this non-invasive, we, we uh, filed for two new patents where we protected the, the journey basically. So like you patent the, the approach, how you deliver a therapy to a patient, which is totally personalized. And, uh, and uh, with this, they were fine. Okay, cool. thanks. Thanks. Anne. You have another question? Yes, thanks for the opportunity and thank you for the nice talk. Um, it goes out to the uh, question of how you, how did you find your co-founders and very senior advisors? Like, I mean, you have the ex-CEO of Novartis on the board. How did you approach these guys? Like just cold calling them or networking? It's kind of unbelievable, but yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I think it's, uh just having the chance of being so long on a project. So you meet people on the way. So like maybe you just, I mean, uh, how I met uh, Rose Wildemuth, he was uh, like a CEO of uh, uh, Medtronic Switzerland. I can remember the University of Basel organized, uh, organized, uh, let's say, uh, um, um, a getting together, or they showed uh, to the CEO of uh, Medtronic during that time, our labs, and then I had the chance to present him, to him directly our results. And, uh, and then I just, after this, uh, let's say, when we were at the stage where we wanted to found a company, I just called him and said, uh, you know me from this and this, and uh, are you interested in becoming a, you know, a chairman? 
of a high uh, potential startup and he totally liked the idea and uh, I'm really happy that we have him aboard. And also regarding Pascal Brenneisen, so I met him in 2017 for the first time. And basically he was uh, somehow, he was also like uh, visiting our department. I also like, I think maybe since if you are at the university at this time, so like just take advantage of this uh, demonstrations where they guide people around. And when you see someone which might be fitting into your, you know, like uh, company as an advisor, whatever, just talk to them. Often they, um, they don't say no. So like, because uh, I mean, they, they also like want to be part of a story, uh, which might be, you know, like a big thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. We would have time for one last one minute question. Anyone? Good, I think then we've covered it all. Really, really happy about it. Thank you, Beacon. Um, Thanks, Rafael. Yeah, was, uh, was really cool. I, uh, uh, I think uh, I could share some insights. Uh, that uh, there is no, let's say, if you want to connect dots, you know, like forward is really difficult, but when you do it backwards, so like everything makes sense. And, uh, and, uh, and if you, let's say, if you don't get funded for your idea, just rethink it. And as, as you said, apply for this venture kick or this kind of programs, because there you get real feedback. Because like coming out from the scientific world, you somehow think I have a patent and that's it. And, uh, you know, like I'm, I have something which, you know, like the world is needing or whatever, but this is not the case. You need, you need a convincing business plan, business model. And I think this was uh, really like also from, from my side was a really great experience. I, I would really recommend it to everyone who wants to start a company because uh, also like in terms of, you know, when you bring it to the next level, so they can set, let's say, uh, I mean, there are so many business angels in this network involved, you know, as soon as you need, let's say, a certain amount of money, you can, you have people where, you, you know, to whom you can talk, you know, and uh, I think this was, was very, very, uh, was also a game changer also, I think, for both. Yeah. Very happy to hear it. Cool. And yeah, I mean, th there's a reason why the investors do it, right? It's because VentureKick is a superior platform. And I mean, I'm not from Switzerland originally, uh, and I can definitely say, uh, having worked in different countries before, this is very unique for this country. And uh, you can prove it by data. I mean, the, in the 15 year experience, uh, time that VentureKick has been around, maybe 50 million Swiss francs were invested, but the startups, in total, until now, raised 4.2 billion uh, Swiss francs. 4.2 billion in 15 years. Now you can, mm -hmm. you can take that number and multiply that to get the valuation of the companies. And this will give you an idea of the kind of value that gets created in this country. So if you're talking about impact, start here. I mean, this is where the new, uh, the new economy of Switzerland is really created. And it's, it's nice to be on this journey and I, we would be very happy to have as many as possible of you join this journey. So hope this was useful. Um, I would like to ask you for, for one little favor in the chat, you find a link to the feedback form it takes you one minute to fill out if you want to say thank you that would be the way because uh, we will forward this to the Gebert Rue Foundation who's supporting all of this so thank you everyone <laughs> thank you also to Bert um, thank you to Leonie for for your contribution to this event and uh, hope to see you again soon cool thank you so much Rafael bye Have thanks. bye everybody bye, thanks for joining Merry Christmas and Happy New cool. Year. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.